All right, hi everybody. Um, I'm going to talk about my paper on a video because I'll likely be on the bus um, when we have the class. So, same as last time. So, I wrote my paper about um, Web 3.0 and eLearning 3.0 and what some of those connections could be to the theory of connectivism. So, like I think a lot of people wrote about um, Web 1.0 was like the the read-only web, and then Web 2.0 was um, like the beginning of like the social web. So things like social media and blogs, and and uh, the ability of the consumer to also be the producer. So that's there's a lot been a lot of literature about Web 2.0, um, especially that I've looked at with uh, personalized learning environments. They talked a lot about that too. Now with Web 2.0, there was also, around that same time, connectivism was, was coming out. So <clears throat> it's interesting to sort of look at those parallels and look at the status of those things with Web 3.0 too. And as I think a lot of other people looked at in this project, Web 3.0 is sort of the, uh, it's also called the semantic web. So it's like uh, sort of maturing of data and the data itself being able to talk to to other data systems. So I look at that kind of like integration of, of these different systems and making the data smarter so that can manifest in like smarter searches or um, a lot of different things. But along with, with those, that connected data, you, you see big data associated with semantic web. You also see AI. So there's a, there's a collection of sort of what, what we think that, what, pe what people think that the the next step in the web is going to be. And so um, I looked at the connection between connectivist thought and um, the semantic web. Now, um, uh, after at the end of the paper, I took these two things and then sort of uh, give some ideas of some of the different ways that that this is like showing up currently. And I had about three examples, but my favorite one was uh, something I talked about a little bit last semester. It was um, social annotation. And what the example is that I used is um, like when you make an annotation in certain systems, like uh, I was referring to hypothesis, uh, the social annotation system, and, and you can, uh, every annotation that you make uh, has a URL associated with it. So if I annotate a website, that has its own URL. And if somebody else annotates that same section of the website, that has a URL too. So what I'm saying is like, the, besides the URL of the page or the PDF or whatever, um, each annotation has its own URL now too. So get, you can get really granular and you can tag uh, these different annotations by themes. And so I use this a lot when I'm gathering literature to try and like write, I'll get my, my different PDFs and tag the inside of the PDF with different themes. And so <clears throat> I think it's just an example of being able to, to uh, have a more granular uh, level of data. So I interviewed this guy who works at a Hypothesis. Uh, he's the head of integrations, I think. His name is John Udell. And we were talking about this um, through the course of the paper, and he's the one that kind of brought that up about the the um, the more fine grained um, URLs in, in in the web, and that's kind of a beginning of of what of something we might start to see with semantic web. There's a lot more, but um, that was basically uh, one of my favorite things that I that I came came away with, and then reading a lot about the roots of connectivism, which I knew a little bit about, but I wasn't. Um, I didn't have as, as deep of knowledge as I do now. <laughs> so, um, so I look forward to hearing from you guys and I'll talk to you soon.